We started the Built Heritage programme because we were aware, uh, as a group, that there are lots of bits of standing stones, bits of uh, built heritage, uh, old mine workings in the forest that are slowly disappearing. I grew up in, in the Forest of Dean uh, and in the 1970s when I was growing up, you know, it was littered with small buildings, uh, mine workings, open shafts which just had bits of fencing around, uh, brick structures that were left over from all sorts of industrial processes. But over the years these have been taken down for, for safety reasons, uh, the sites have been redeveloped, um, tourism has come in and so they've either been uh, reused for something or they've been cleared out of the way to make a car park or whatever. I think we were aware that if we don't do something uh, to show uh, how these things should be conserved and, uh, and to raise the awareness of their importance, then they're going to get lost forever. You just cannot appreciate what this once looked like. There were colossal buildings everywhere here. They stood tall. All of this across here was um, a ginormous viaduct. There were archways. There was a massive ra interlinked rail system within here. Um, and it, it was just busy super busy and now there's nothing the occasional deer and pig when we started the program we sat down and we wrote out a list of all the important sites that we could think of in the forest and then we did a sort of uh, you know honing down process what we came back with was a list which gave us a cross-section of those types of buildings. So, you know, we've got important industrial sites like uh, here at uh, Titanic Works, the sister site, which is Dark Hills. We've picked a lime kiln, something that was accessible and repairable and was a good example of a local vernacular uh, lime kiln. We picked a, a small piece of transport infrastructure, I suppose, from, from, from days gone by. It was a little pack horse bridge down in Sudley. We've done a, a tram road down near Bream and we've done some clearance on it and we've done some repairs on the, on the side walls. We chose some works at, at Trafalgar, which is, which is an important mining site. We're currently standing on uh, the site, one of our legacy sites within the Forest of Dean, um, of what remains of a ventilation chimney attached to Trafalgar Colliery. Within the project itself, it was deemed that this site was worthy enough for some sympathetic restoration work. The majority of this site has been wiped clear over time, but the remains of this chimney are such that they were worth salvaging. So there has been light restoration done to what was the base of the chimney. Within the, the base of this, you'll see um, a ventilation flue that leads off into the distance, which went down to the main colliery site. Um, this has now been retrofitted with a grill because it's now uh, deemed quite a, an important high binocular site for bats. This is one of those particular mine sites that was being operated by a gentleman, Cornelius Brain, at the time. What we have left on this site now is very little. Now we are left with two legacy stones uh, indicating the two shaft locations that once proudly stood on this site. As we can see, under the Forester's Forest, we have operated this uh, green plaque system. Sir Francis Brain, son of Cornelius, has been celebrated for his pioneering endeavours within mining. This was the site where electricity was first used primarily as a motive power and for underground lighting. Um, it was a first in the world uh, and as such has been duly recognised. So this is the Dark Hills Ironworks, which was established by David Mushet in 1818. David Mushet had come down at the end of the 18th century really to impart some of his knowledge and skill in the production of iron and he came down to the Wycliffe furnace in Colford. He did a bit of experimental jiggery pokery there trying to get it to work. Off the back of that he then started buying up sites of his own and lots of assets really. By the time he died in the 1840s he held lots of mine uh, rights and premises throughout the forest. This is the Titanic Steelworks, and the Titanic Steelworks was an important part of the um, Mushet story. After the 1840s and the, the death of David Mushet, the ironworks, which is uh, over there, came into the control of Robert Mushet, the son.
Robert was a, a real dabbler. He was a real experimenter. He liked experimenting. He didn't really have any business acumen. He wanted to know how it worked, how he could improve it, how he could get it better. And, and he'd worked with his, with his father uh, on the iron process, but really the key to the Industrial Revolution was steel, because steel is stronger. The problem was that uh, because Robert wasn't particularly very good at business, he didn't protect his patents, he didn't, you know, he didn't uh, write down his processes, he didn't protect himself. Once the secret of how you made that good steel uh, got out, then it became somebody else's property. So Henry Bessemer and, and the likes took it on uh, and the processes all moved to Sheffield, which is why we've now got Sheffield Steel. We've taken the time to clear some vegetation off it, repair it, uh, we've put some more shoring back up to, to make sure that those standing structures remain because it is an important part of the story of, of steel in the UK. That's a good example of why the Foresters Forest and the Built Heritage Programme that we've got here it, it, is so important because, you know, these could very easily be lost.